Hello, everyone. Uh, we are here uh, to talk about uh, hiding in the familiar steganography and vulnerabilities in popular uh, archive formats. My name is Mario Vuxan, and I'm here with Thomas Laperichin. We are founders of Reversing Labs, a company that uh, is working on uh, uh, file analysis and unpacking frameworks. And we have, uh, let me raise this up. Uh, we have presented uh, at last Black Hat uh, open source engine called uh, open source project called Titan Engine that has become a really popular uh, tool for uh, file analysis. So uh, we uh, have been since uh, working on uh, some interesting technology and have uh, in the process discovered some vulnerabilities in uh, popular archive formats like uh, zip rar, uh, gzip cab, and 7zip. And are here uh, uh, joined with uh, Brian Carney, who is uh, uh, CEO of uh, our world's leading digital forensics company, uh, Access Data, that has helped us a lot, you know, with uh, uh, putting together uh, this research. So, uh, just to move forward on this, uh, our goals today is to just give you a really brief introduction to steganography as it relates to archives then to uh, uh, give you uh, some uh, ideas on how we could uh, uh, obtain malformations inside of uh, different file formats and uh, talk about uh, their steganographic implications as well as uh, vulnerabilities that uh, are a natural byproduct. After that, we will move on to demonstrating uh, uh, some uh, quick and dirty uh, hex editing and uh, uh, how to create your own uh, file formats by modifying the very standard, standard stuff. And we'll finish with a, a freeware tool that's going to be available today, which we call Nix Engine, uh, which has been specifically designed to detect malformations in standard uh, archive formats, and then also to detect all the uh, vulnerabilities that we will be talking uh, today. So our principal topic is steganography. So what that is, many of you know that, just simply getting to the basic the, uh, verbiage definition, it is the art and science of writing hidden messaging, messages in such a way that no one, apart from the sender and intended recipient, suspects the existence of the message. Uh, it's really a form of uh, uh, security through obscurity. It's a concept that's been around for a long time. You know, we want to talk about you know, all its ancient and uh, historic predecessors. But really, when it comes to digital stuff, it comes to this. Take one image. In this case, you know, we will uh, re uh, remove uh, uh, some bits of the color map. The result will be a black image. We will uh, change the brightness uh, by 85%, and then we will get the hidden message or the image you know, that's being uh, buried into it. So um, when we're talking about steganography, it's really images. It's been historically audio, uh, has been more recently video. But today, we will really focus on uh, archives or ways we can bury really big payloads into uh, standard things. Steganography, or uh, shorter uh, uh, for, I think we are, is this the next slide or the one before? It is the next slide. Oh, or just, a, I thought we had another slide before that. Uh, oh, we are missing one slide. All right. Doesn't matter. Um, um, anyhow, so uh, when it comes to steganography, there is uh, legitimate use and Ill illegitimate use for uh, steganography. And uh, uh, stego is the word that you know forensics community uses for the steganographic uh, use when looking for the so-called contraband. But uh, uh, steganography is also a feature of you know watermarking, DRM uh, uh, cap for you know signing movies, or more recently for. Uh, 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 embedding uh, watermarked information inside of the medical images. And uh, still, uh, uh, people talk about steganography principally for messages uh, hiding text within the text, in images, media files. And the uh, reason for proliferation of this is that you know, there are over 600 different tools available today to uh, allow you to embed uh, material with different sorts of algorithms. 
Many of these things have been uh, open source and as such uh, uh, there has been prolifer proliferation of commission, private tools, uh, really focused on total obscurity uh, in embedding information, uh, principally to uh, evade detection that in today's world is done in really two different ways. Either you try to inventory all the possible algorithms and are looking for artifacts uh, inside of images or media files, or you're just looking for the presence of the tools that do uh, encryption, decryption uh, of the data, meaning you're looking for hashes of uh, these tools. So, um, as such, uh, uh, I'd like to invite Brian to, to tell you about, you know, you know, how does this look like in real life, you know, today? Thanks, Brian. So, interesting enough, we do quite a bit of work not on identifying tools, but opening up the payload or the results of, uh, of um, Stego's files. But I, as part of this, uh, this project, working with the Reversing Labs team, that we went out, I set out to try to find some good stories about steganography. And interestingly enough, I really couldn't find any good, good stories about it because we had magically gotten files at times at which we needed to look at. But um, it could be due to the fact that it's really not that prevalent in the wild. I don't totally believe that, that it's true, but it is obviously a possibility. Um, it could be that analysts are not really looking, so they never find it, right? It's like there's so many other things. You look at a, an, you look at a hard drive, it's got a half a million, a million items on there. You see a bitmap or a wave file. You know, what are the chances? Um, it could be that most media-based uh, approaches have many weaknesses. So the big thing is, is that when you start shoving a lot of data in some of the traditional Stego carrier files, they start to get a little bit messy. So like the images get fuzzier, the audio gets more garbled, uh, and whatnot. So you, it's not a good means if you're really trying to take a fair amount of data outside of little bits, of, bits and pieces and stuff like that. Um, and that right now, the best method to identify Stego is to find the tools based off of hashes. End of story, it's pretty much sort of what they do. There's a few different hash databases out there and a few different tools and stuff like that. But uh, right now, sort of the best method to identify Stego on a machine is to see if there's presence of a Stego tool. If there's presence of a Stego tool, there's a possibility that there's some Stego payload or there was some uh, potential information that was Stego. So, um, or it could be that steganography is just so effective that nobody really knows. Um, so new paradigms for forensic, really from an investigative perspective, Obviously, we talked about the traditional steganography is thought of just embedding data in media files, audio, JPEG, bitmap, GIFs, and stuff like that. Again, things get a little bit uh, messy as you start to increase the payload. So if, um, if you're really going to go through the effort of taking stuff, you, you kind of want to probably take a bunch of stuff with you. So this really, the, the, the session is really about a new paradigm in steganography, which gets used a lot. Um, but really, there will be a shift away from the media files, probably, to more of the archive files, zip, cab, 7-zip, um, like the rest of the team is talking about. So within these archive files, why, why, it's a big, why it's relevant is because you can start putting more data in there. These data, once you put data in these archives, you can still get stuff out. So you're like, oh, it's fine. The archive's good. Uh, so it's sort of, you don't really know unless you really start to look into these different archive files. Um, and there's also other approaches. There's discussion about a Stego file system uh, recently, uh, which is basically a file system and uh, which sort of looks like a TrueCrypt, where you basically open it up with a regular password and then, because in the UK they recently passed a law talking about you have to, you have to give up your password. So if that's the case, they, you would go, they would say, give me your password, you'd give them your password, it would open up, there'd be benign files, but inside that archive or that file system, is a whole other set of things. So um, that was called the Stego file system. And then I also just uh, read about a, another approach where you can take a CD file system, the CDFS like file system with the CD, and you can just jam data into the CD. But when you go to read it, it looks like a regular play and stuff like that, but you need to know to look outside of the sort of no, no, uh, normal bounds. So uh, investigating Stego in archives, so why this is really relevant from an investigative perspective is, one, it's easier to hide larger payloads in plain sight. I think the most relevant thing is it's not easy to uh, identify using existing methods. So all the existing methods are like blind anomaly-based approach, uh, looking for things that aren't the signatures, uh, image analysis using image filters, audio analyzers, 
and whatnot. So those are all very much media-based approach. And the 